sitting in for Mark today or standing in for Mark for announcement. So I know that there is an ad uh, council meeting Thursday at 7. And I could look at the clipboard here that says what's going on. <laughs> Applications for the Christmas Bazaar are in the office. So if you lean toward the bazaar, you can uh, go get some of those. When well, is it? It is in the Christmas season. I don't know. When is the Christmas <laughs> bazaar? <laughs> November 6th? Just, just FYI, I didn't know what was it. November 6th and what time? 9 to 2. 9 to 2. That's probably a Saturday, I'm guessing. Yes. Good. Okay. Bible study Wednesday, 10.30 a.m. Thursday at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Trunk or treat is coming up. That's uh, two weeks from yesterday. So I encourage anybody you know that's got little ones, maybe like the one sitting between uh, Marsha and Paul there, to come participate. That's going to be from 3 to 6. Trunk or treat here at the church. There is a jigsaw puzzle in Marsha's old room for everybody to work on. Is there something else to go with that? Or? No, I just want everybody to feel free to have a spare time to go in and, and work on the jigsaw puzzle. The scene and we actually were doing that for team building, they said, at IM. We, we do those. You know, supposedly for a break, but we had one guy that would go spend three or four hours at a time. <laughs> Don't think that was the intent. So we already talked about Ad Council. Obviously, if you chair any committee, you should be there. But Ad Council is open to anybody, so you can feel free to come. Pastor Scott is on vacation next week, but you will be here next Sunday or not? So we'll not be here next Sunday. I think my client is doing the new man's doing this service, great. Apollo assisting. And then uh, lighting candles on All Saints Day. So we'd like to know who would like a candle lit in memory of an honor of someone. So that would be two weeks from today, I'm assuming then. So when when do we need that information by? We just need a ballpark figure on how many we need. You know, we need 20 or 50 or 100. Anyone of your loved ones have passed away in the past few years, we can light a candle for them. So just call Sharon and let them know that you heard. Any other announcements that are not on the clipboard? Thank you, by the way. <laughs> what have been a very short list. Okay, let's go right into Joey's <coughs> prayers and concerns then. Linda. I have uh, two concerns. I went to two funerals on Thursday. And it was very sad because there was only like, uh, the one was Maury Dahl. He's a lion. Oh, I know Maury Yeah, the, the lions never showed up. I was the only lion there, which was sad. Um, they gave me a run around and I couldn't get a hold of people and stuff. And, then, and there was only 11 people from the church and the family. And Vivian Nugent's uh, funeral was right after, so we went to that one. And there was only 12 people there counting the pastor. It was it was very sad that nobody showed up. We went to school with Maury's daughter and known him for a long time. Maury and Skip were both of them. I guess it wasn't even in the papers. No, I never saw anything. Maury Dahl, Maury's Dahl. Oh, he was a lion forever. I think he worked at Garden City Fan, if I yes. remember correctly. But long time. Or he probably had to be, I'm guessing, in his mid-90s. 95. 95. Susan. I'd like to ask for prayers for my husband's family. His aunt in Arkansas is not doing well. They've got her on hospice. She's 94 years young, so she's lived a good life, and she's, she's getting tired. So it's... We're, we're thinking probably just a matter of That's time. That's David's his great aunt. Great aunt. His grandma's sister. His grandfather's sister. Grandfather's sister. Yeah. And then uh, my mom said sick with pneumonia again. We're finding these answers by we're going to a different hospital this time. Unfortunately, the reports give us more answers than the memorial has. But we're getting, we're getting some There's answers. There's a lot of pneumonia. 
pneumonia going around, the guy that I worked with, he and his wife and mother all had COVID a year ago, and all three of them have pneumonia right now. And then just as a joy, I was able to spend several hours with my aunt road tripping. We went from South Haven to St. Joe, five different beaches. It was beautiful. Most relaxing day I've had in a long time. Any other announcements or any other joys, any other concerns? Beautiful weather, the rain has stopped. I would imagine Steve Listenbarger and the other farmers have not had much success in harvesting this last week. I do see your brothers out this morning. <laughs> Jim's two grandchildren are here. Hello? Did Grandma let you guys drive or did he drive? Oh, she's going to be shy. <laughs> nice to see you both. Well, if that's it. Yeah, Becky has uh, some uh, lumbar issues, so she's on crutches if you didn't notice her walk in this morning, so we'll keep her in our prayers. Okay, let's have a moment of prayer. <clears throat> Father, many things have probably not been spoken this morning, things that are troubling people that are heavy on their hearts. And your Holy Spirit, come upon them, give them comfort, give them a feeling of peace, and help people to know that your will will always prevail. Thank you for the beautiful weather. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the sun to help us appreciate the things that come in between. We pray these things in your Son's name who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, right. can you kids come up? Are they going to be afraid of me, or what? We'll have some fun.
so everyone can kind of hear me a little bit better, hopefully. But our message here worked out really well because we had everything uh, God and wants us to do certain things, right? So God wants us to be nice, to love each other, to be merciful, forgiving, to serve, to save souls. There's a whole long list. And so like we sang that song, Jesus loves me, this I know. And a struggle for a lot of people is to know that Jesus loves them and to have that love in their heart. And so uh, up here we had Grayson. So let's all clap for Grayson. He gave you a good try and did a good job and caught Savannah. And so that was just awesome. And so, but we also uh, had some people a little bit afraid and unsure what to do. The jump rope is obviously just a little large for Presley. And so, but that's about loving Jesus. Do you know Jesus loves you? you? Say yes. Yes. So, that was his voice. But so with the jump rope, sometimes uh, when we have new things, things we're not used to, like reading the Bible or the lessons that God wants us to have in our hearts, it's hard for us to accept. It's hard for us to learn. But in time and when we practice, we understand it better, right? So if you go home and practice your jump rope a bunch, will you get better at it? And will it be easier? What about you, Savannah? <laughs> what do you do for a hobby? Shrug your shoulders when you're good at it. That's a good hobby. Build up your neck muscles. Presley, what do you do for fun? Play Barbies, all right. Her favorite. So and Jesus is the same way. Praying is the same way. And going to church is the same way. The, the more we do it, the better we understand and the easier it is for us to do. Amen? Shake your head, Jim. <laughs> all right, so let's stand up. We'll say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these wonderful children that they are here in your house. We pray your blessing upon them, upon their parents and grandparents, and all those who are in their lives, to help them grow closer to you, to be a good example for them, and to be the love of Christ in their lives, so that no matter where they are, they know that they are loved. And in Jesus' name, we all say, Amen!
Scott, I'm not sure we want to just stop on this. This is uh, having to do with Jesus and Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19, verse 4. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up on a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods, half, I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today, Salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, today we have a visitor. His name is John Holland. So this is my buddy anytime I talk about going hiking and someone trying to kill me, <laughs> taking me on a death march, it's John. He is a wonderful friend and a wonderful man and uh, knows his Bible really well. And, uh, is he the one that paid your telephone bill to? Yep, that's the one. Uh, it's through them. Yep, that's why the area code is 989 because they helped me out there. I knew I knew that thing. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. When he comes up, it says his name, so that's it. It's not a prank call. So, <laughs> that and then, uh, you know, up here, if you don't know, that's uh, so that the worship band can be up here permanently. We can have the worship band, the choir, the piano slash organ. Uh, but, you know, uh, Joe did a wonderful job this morning. That sounds so good. And so, when I figure out why I'm doing it, Better. Yeah, so. uh, but we are truly blessed, and that's coming along uh, very well. And the boys are working the stuff they did yesterday that you can't see. And so, uh, like I tell you, if, uh, even things like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir that you see, if you watch them on television uh, in moving forward, they have electric guitar, electric bass, and drums. And so, uh, the goal here isn't to just have a worship band and a choir and a piano. It's to have us all uh, play together, sometimes just choir, sometimes just the band, but uh, really, especially around Christmas and big celebrations, uh, to have everyone playing together, and hopefully God also blesses us with some cello players and that kind of thing, and we can have a very full sound. Uh, Mike DeWitt isn't here today, but he made a mistake in telling me he used to play French horn, so hopefully we can find him one and use that at some point. And I, uh, just a picture in my head to share with you is to uh, have this uh, chancel completely full with instruments playing for the glory of God. And uh, to me, if we have 30 people singing and a full accompaniment, how beautiful would that be? And in all honesty, I don't know any churches that have all that. And it would all be for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And so we're looking at the Ten Commandments, and the first one is the most important. So instead of quizzing you, we're on, uh, I believe, number eight. Uh, but instead of quizzing you on all number eight, since the first one is the most important, what is the first commandment? No other gods. Right. And so uh, in so much that we do, in so much that is our lives and who we are, we often put other things before God. And if we uh, are honest about that, then uh, it can be absolutely life-changing. Because even if you're doing good things, 
uh, if God isn't at the core and the reason that you're doing it, then uh, it can lead to trouble. And so, uh, today we're going to talk about stealing. How many of you have ever stolen something? So, uh, we are all guilty. I have another friend, the guy I'm going with, uh, be at his house tonight, leaving for the big uh, seminar that I'm going to out in Virginia for the week. Uh, one of the things he talks about often is when he was like four years old, he stole something from a store, and his mom made him take it back and made him apologize to the store owner and made a big deal. And he's, uh, how old is Tom? Tom's 63, 64, he still feels guilty. <laughs> He has not been able to let that go in full, and so I try to get him to let that go, but uh, we're all good. We've all stolen things, and the uh, best story I have, I won't tell you the whole story, but I have a friend, and uh, he had a Bible, that, a nice Bible that got stolen, so <laughs> when we figured out that it was stolen, we just said we would hope that's a blessing to whoever took it, and they must have really needed it. And so, uh, may God bless them with that Bible. And so when we think about don't steal, our minds immediately go to physical things, so don't steal Bibles, don't steal cars. We know down the street here, just a few months ago, one of the cars got stolen. And they left the keys in the car and came out the next day and the car was gone. They had gone joyriding and trashed the car. And so, uh, those kind of things get stolen, but we also have the, the mental things that get stolen, or like, you know, songs, you copyright a song and somebody uh, kind of copies that. You know, Michael Jackson at one point had a big court case about stealing somebody's song, and that's really hard to prove because all you have to do is change a few words and a few chords, and then it's not exactly the same song, so it's no longer yours. And so uh, that copywriting thing, from what I have seen, really depends on how much money you have and who you are. And uh, so but it's not just physical things, it's mental things also. And there's also emotional stealing. You know, when a husband cheats on a wife or vice versa, uh, you're stealing from that person. You're stealing their emotions. You're stealing their joy. You're stealing their peace. And we don't think of it often as that, we think of it more as hurting. But another way we can look at that is uh, you are actually stealing what is rightfully theirs. And so those things happen, unfortunately, on a regular basis. <laughs> another way that we steal, but we don't think of it as stealing, how many of you have borrowed something from someone and just haven't given it back yet? Yeah, and so... Uh, once again, we're probably all guilty of that at some point. We really liked it, we held on to it, or I borrowed a book once and it got ruined and I didn't replace it and I didn't get it back. And uh, even as we speak, I'm taking steps to rectify that because it wasn't too long ago. And so, uh, in order to have a clear conscience, you know, like I said, I'm uh, taking care of that. But we borrow things and we hold on to it and we know we have it and we have it for too long. and. Uh, that's not good either. That's another form, a mild form of stealing that we really don't think of as stealing. And then we have, uh, how many of you live in the neighborhood? You know, I laugh when people say something about out here about bothering the neighbors with too much noise at my house or something, because it makes me laugh, because really the only noise we hear as neighbors around here is the gun shooting, right? <laughs> Besides that, you're either too far away to hear anything, or uh, it's just not very noisy out here. And like I say, when I was up in uh, Wayman, I lived on a mill pond, and that was very nice. Went fishing literally pretty much every day, because uh, it was straight out the back door. But uh, the downside of that, it was near the city, and a uh, transom across the water, and there was always noise. And though the water was there, which can be peaceful, uh, living here on the prairie, it's nice and quiet. John is a biology major and loves the stars and knows them and knows what plants you can eat and not eat when we're out hiking. And so it's, uh, you know, he introduced me to thimbleberries, which are awesome. And so uh, I thank him for that. But uh, when we come out here and sit out there at night and look at the stars, it's just quiet and it's just beautiful, you know. 
And so, uh, but what the downside of that is, how many of you ever lived next to someone that has a yipping dog? How many of you own a yipping dog? So, uh, my mom had two dogs at one point, uh, and they just barked and barked and barked and barked, you know, kind of the inbred kind of thing. If nothing's out there, no reason. And the neighbors called me and said, could you please talk to your mom about the dogs just barking nonstop? And my mom would say, well, they're, they're people too. They can talk if they want to. But the dogs would bark for hours at a time. Yeah, I agree with you guys. <laughs> so, and I, but what did I tell the neighbor? I have talked to her. <laughs> she tells me I'm wrong and they can bark all they want. And so, uh, but what she doesn't realize, and anyone in that scenario, is uh, you're stealing peace and quiet from your neighbors. And you don't think of it that way. Uh, but the, the point here is you're taking something away from someone that rightfully belongs to them. And that, in even a mild form, can be perceived as stealing. And so if I take this to the Bible, as always, and so who, is your, who are your favorite thieves in the Bible? And, uh, you know, you might have something in mind, but we'll just talk about a couple. We got Jacob and Esau and Rebecca, right? And Jacob steals the birthright, and it's just an awesome story, because how hairy was Esau? Because <laughs> they take, what, a goat hide and put it on his arms? <laughs> And it feels like his brother, I have, I've had hairy arms since like fourth grade, but this, you could easily tell the difference between a goat hide and my arm. So when I read that, I always giggle because Esau had to be the hairiest man you've ever seen in your life. That just reminds me, when we were out in California at Venice Beach, I don't know if you've ever seen it on television, but uh, they show that family where the boys have hair all over their faces and their complete bodies are covered. There's like three or four of them from this one family. And we actually saw that guy because he was outside the, you know, where you pay money to go in and see, hate to call it a freak show, but I don't know what else to call it to make the point. But uh, so he was out there, got to see him. And, but that has to be about how hairy Esau was. And so even Paul with his wonderful beard uh, isn't that hairy. But anyways, Jacob stole the birthright of Esau, more or less, and mom helped him, so she was an accomplice. So nowadays, maybe, uh, if this was rewritten for modern times, you know, Jacob and, uh, yeah, who's his mom? Da -da -da -da. Yeah, Rebecca. So yeah, so Jacob and Rebecca might have ended up in jail. That'd be a whole different story. But things ended up right, because God's with them, but... Uh, that's one of the thieves. Jacob's known for kind of being a little bit iffy at times, right? And then if we move ahead to Jesus, who's the famous thief with Jesus? Yeah, so we had Judas, because Judas, the whole time they say when they get to the end, Judas has been stealing money all along. And that's, uh, he always wanted to be in charge of the money so that he could always take whatever he wanted. And so that's another thief in the Bible. And so, uh, I had Roger read about Zacchaeus, and the story we always think about Zacchaeus being up in the tree, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Uh, most of us know that song. Yeah, so that's awesome. And so Zacchaeus is up in the tree, and Jesus says, I'm coming to your house, but why does Jesus want to go to his house? Because he wants to set things straight. And Zacchaeus truly repents. And uh, Zacchaeus, if you want to ever talk to someone about repentance, or if you want to learn more, uh, Zacchaeus is a wonderful story because as I teach you uh, and myself, repentance isn't just saying I'm sorry, it's also making things right. So you're supposed to go to whoever uh, you've hurt, whatever you've damaged, whatever you've stolen, any of those things that you've kept from someone, you need to give it back to them and make that relationship right. And so that is what happens with Zacchaeus, but at that point, uh, there's different ways to look at it. Zacchaeus has been stealing from people, which makes him a thief. And Jesus says, you need to stop. And so this brings us to the Ten Commandments, the 49 commandments of Jesus. Uh, that, like I say, they talked about much, much less. But all these things that Jesus says, uh, like, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
in all the, the passages like I've tried to teach you since I've been here, one of the most important words in the Bible is if. And when Jesus talks about your blessing, when Jesus talks about all these things that God wants for you, they are all preceded by the word if. If you will repent, if you will do as I say, if you will keep my commandments, then you have these blessings. And that leads us to an interesting uh, thought process about stealing. Because in your relationship with God, uh, we think of it as disobedience, we think of it as sin. But if you're not in full doing what God wants you to do, which is first and foremost always the Shema, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. If you're not doing that, you can say it's sin, you can say it's disobedience, but another way to look at that is you are stealing from God. You are keeping from Him what is rightfully His. And if I were to ask any of you, are you thieves? If I were to ask any of you, do you steal? And you would say, no, I know it's all good people here. But in our relationship with the Lord, are we truly humble? Do we truly put God and others first? And if the answer isn't 100% unequivocally yes, then in a sense, we are stealing from God. And our example always is Jesus. And so the question we ask, our life compared to Jesus, uh, what did Jesus withhold from God? Nothing. Nothing. And so when you look at your life and you look at the life of Christ, is, is it parallel? Is it equal? Are you giving all of yourself to God the way Jesus gave all of himself to God? And that comes in the form of love and mercy, but also, uh, you know, in proclaiming the gospel, doing all these things that Jesus says that we are to do as followers, yes, but also imitators of Christ. And so, uh, you know, when I finish up here a little bit, uh, but the question I want you to keep, to write down, to have on your heart, uh, to pray about, am I stealing from God in any way? And always remember when you feel convicted, when you feel that tingle in your heart, when the Holy Spirit puts something on your mind or heart, that that is a blessing. Because that is the creator of the universe saying to you, I love you, and if you can fix this, it will make us even closer than we are right now. So it is a beautiful and wonderful gift. And so we have Jesus, who gave us all to and for God and for us. And we have ourselves. And uh, as I say often, we're in the book of Romans, and we say all fall short, right? All of us have sinned. All of us fall short. None of us is perfect. If you're imperfect, sit down. So yeah, 100%. All of us are imperfect. But we have hope, Amen. And like I try to preach, try to try to teach, when you come to Christ, are you going to heaven? And uh, there's always indecision, but in our hearts, if we are giving all of our heart to Jesus, if we do believe with all our heart, soul, and might, uh, we should be confident in our answer of yes. Because does Jesus love us? Yes. Did Jesus come for us? Yes. And so the example... Uh, to take this from Old Testament of don't steal and to, to keep it on the relationship of God, don't steal uh, from God what is rightfully His, we look to the cross. And when we look to the cross, who's up on the cross with Jesus next to Him? And the answer is we have the two thieves. We have one thief that, re one thief that refuses to repent. We have the thief that says, if you are God, uh, save me and save yourself. Why don't you do something? And so he has turned away from Jesus. He has turned away from Jesus in disbelief. But we have the other thief, the imperfect man, uh, 
But that imperfect man, that person who has stolen from others, that person who has sinned and is paying the price for the sin, turns to Jesus and says, I believe you are the Messiah. And I throw myself at your mercy. And what does Jesus say to him? He says that you will be with me in paradise this very day. And so as we leave here, Christians, amen, followers of Christ, imitators of Christ, all of us imperfect, but all of us loving the Lord. May we take with us uh, that we seriously pray to God, where are we stealing from you? Where do we fall short in our relationship with you? Where do we fall short in being as Christ-like as we possibly can? To speak to our hearts, to convict us, but knowing, knowing deep in our hearts that Jesus came for us and that in this sin, in all these areas where we fall short, that we have the mercy of our loving Savior and that through Him, through that sacrifice, that we are perfected not by what we do, but perfected in His blood. And let us not just hear that, but let us know those words, let those words touch our hearts, and may they change us into the Christ-like beings God created us to be. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these examples in the Bible. Uh, the, uh, we know that we are not a deity. We know that we are not. God. But because of Jacob, because of Rebekah, because of Zacchaeus, because of the man upon the cross who professed his sin and begged for mercy while hanging on a cross next to Jesus, we know that we have hope. We know that you love us. We know that through repentance we are made whole and we are perfected in his glorious healing blood. And we just thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning, this time together, uh, the beautiful songs, the beautiful scripture, uh, all the things that point us to you. And we give you all the glory, all the thanks, and all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Amen. So, I'd just like to sing a song. All right, as we sing. Be still my soul.
to each other. Like I always say, if you, somebody at church that's new here, you don't know very well, that's who you should talk to and get to know them a little better. It's a wonderful opportunity. And so hasn't this just been a wonderful Sabbath morning? And I, from here, you can see out the windows. It's just beautiful out there. We are so blessed. So we'll have our closing prayer, sing our song, and then we'll go have fun. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to worship you. Uh, to sing your glorious name, to praise you. Uh, may you fill our hearts. May the Holy Spirit be with us as we go forth from here, uh, knowing that you have called us to make disciples of the entire world. I would book, uh, ask your blessing on those who are here this morning, those who are watching at home. Um, we just come humbly before you as your children. And uh, we just pray for all the, the hurting people physically, emotionally, spiritually. Help them to grow. May peace dwell in their hearts. And we just give you all the praise, all the glory. And in the name of Jesus Christ, who loves us more than we will ever understand, all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Amen. Amen.